Hurricane came up. So, right. yeah, there we are. Yeah. Hey, everybody, gonna... welcome to Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy. For those who don't know, I'm the Teddy part, and that's the Randy part. And our special guest today is Nancy Freeman. You'll learn more about Nancy in a little bit. Thank you for everybody who showed up. Um, for those who don't know me, a little, a little bit more about me. I own a business. Actually, my wife owns a business in her mind <laughs> uh, called Burris Consulting. We're all about teaching LinkedIn as a business tool. We do uh, one-on-one coaching, corporate training programs, mastermind groups with uh, we, uh, monthly uh, webinars and, um, uh, and private group sessions on Facebook and Quora. At the end of the day, our goal is to teach business professionals how to use LinkedIn as a business tool, and I absolutely love doing that. Hey, Randy, I just look, man, there's, I, there's one person on here that I don't think knows who you is. Well, that's going to change. Yeah. Right now, Randy Wooden with Goodwill Industries of Northwest North Carolina, hanging out here in cloudy, rainy Winston-Salem as Ida is rearing her ugly head uh, farther north and east uh, than the, golly, those folks down in Louisiana and stuff. Man, they got a hammer down there. Um, but anyway, yeah, run our professional center. Our services are free. I have clients all over the country, but mostly here in the triad. We do work by appointment. So find me on LinkedIn and reach out to me. We're happy to try to help you if you or maybe somebody you know is in a job search. That's what we do. And again, we're free. So I uh, can't beat that. I'll tell you what, we are going to have a great show today. Today, I'm excited. We've got a live wire coming to us from St. Louis, Missouri. Nancy Friedman, I guarantee you this will, there will not be a dull moment today. If you're watching us, let us know what you're eating for lunch. And yeah, I do want to know where you're also watching us from, because we kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, you know, we've got folks all over the world that, that check this thing out. And so if we've got any new people, make sure you let us know that as well. But Nancy, I'll briefly introduce you and then you take it from there a little more introduction. But Nancy Friedman is the telephone doctor. And so uh, we'll find out what that means and how she got to be the telephone doctor. But she comes to us all the way from St. Louis. And I'll tell you what, folks, if you are one of the few people on this show watching that don't think LinkedIn mm. has an impact in establishing new relationships. Nancy's a prime example. And it all happened through LinkedIn. Teddy, I know you've done numerous talks. We've had many guests and they're a direct result of activity on LinkedIn. We establish rapport. We ask about the show and Nancy's no except. Nancy, tell us a little bit more about the telephone doctor all the way from St. Louis. World's only telephone doctor. Thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bottom line, um, I am the world's only telephone doctor, founder and chairman of Telephone Doctor Customer Service Training, which provides our online platform, service skills with an S.com. Uh, our bottom line, our motto, our mantra, what do they call the, 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 the uh, Thing that you're supposed to post on the wall. I can't think of it right now. Uh, we help companies communicate mission statement. We mission. help companies communicate better with their customers and mm -hmm. and 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 coworkers. We we cannot leave the coworkers out. So we run around the country. We, you know, most of the most of our business is from our online. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, you know what? Cut my on-site programs. And we're doing the fun Zoom programs, and we've done them from all. You know, India keeps calling us. They Apparently, I'm, I'm very big in India. Uh, so steady, by the way. He, I know. I heard he went a, to Bangladesh. Was, a, it Zoom or was it Zoom, Zoom Bangladesh? Or did you fly out there, Teddy? I, I, I left first thing this morning around 9.15. Oh, you're back already. 10.15, yeah. Said you, well, that was a quick trip. I would have stayed for lunch or something. But, yeah, you, know, well, but you know, I had to get back for you, Nancy. But so, yeah, yeah it was by all, Zoom. Stop getting yeah. on me. Stop <laughs> getting on me. This is a family show. Hey, look, we're going to have some topics today. With, I don't care whether you're a job hunter or you're not. At some point, if you live long enough, you probably will be a job hunter. So we're going to talk about tips for better communication skills. How can I improve that, whether it's a phone interview, whether it's dealing with my current uh, coworkers, or even in our personal lives, maybe being a better listener and being more aware of how we use our voice to communicate effectively. I always ask the why question, Nancy. Why, what was it that, started you and kept you on this career path of doing what you do because i know you're passionate about it so tell us how you got to be where you are do you have two three four hours i'm going to shorten it i promise i'll shorten it um and okay. you see the book behind me can you read that how you how you say it that, how that, you say it 
Yeah, yeah, that's what the premise of Telephone Doctor, but I'll shorten the 45 minute normal story to about five or six, if you don't mind. What happened is a true story and I, I get pleasure telling it. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I have worked together since forever. And when he created, we've had two radio stations, an advertising company, Telephone Doctor, Service Skills. But when he created his advertising part, I became the uh, customer service client success team, if you will. And my job was to call everybody. And I did that pretty well make them happy, keep them on. It was a renewal thing. And one afternoon I called my, my insurance agent and mm -hmm. to save you a lot of time, every question I asked the person who answers was, I don't know, um, nobody's here right now. And then I always say, well, who am I talking to if nobody's there? So I mean, that's sort of a stupid question or answer. And I got so frustrated because it was a simple question and nobody could help me. My agent that I wanted was out of the office. Mm. So I thought about it. And the next day I called up and I told Michael, cancel all my policies. And we were his largest account. He's my gosh, what happens? I said, your people stink. They're so rude. They're so un unpleasant. They're so, they're so frustrating. I said, you're terrific. I'll have lunch with you. Your wife is cute, but I don't want to do any business with you anymore. Thank you very much. And he says, you know, Nancy, you're right. When I call your office, I'm treated like a king and I'm not even a customer. I said, Michael, we treat our wrong numbers better than you treat your customers. He said, would you come to my office and would you train my people? Okay, I'll come. So I've never done anything like this. I've been a working mom for all my life and I was working with my husband. So I said, Dick, what do I do? He says, just right from the heart and go there and speak 15, 20 minutes. So that's what I did. They had 15, 16 people, little round tables and... Mm -hmm. Uh, Michael introduced me. Nancy's going to talk to us for a few minutes. So I stood up there and have people looking at me, much like you're looking at me, Randy. Oh, what are you going to say? And I said, well. Um, it better be good. Yeah. <laughs> I said, at our office, we say please. And one woman said, write that down. Write that down. She wrote down please. Write down thank you. Write down you're welcome. They were writing, you know, things that you and I do, like breathing in and out. So at mm -hmm. the end, 15 minutes, I had another cup of coffee. And I started to walk out the door. The president of the insurance agency said, Thank you very much. We really learned some new things. And I came home to my husband. I said, Dick, <laughs> the guy tells me we really learned some new things, things like you and I breathing in and out. I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And Dick said, don't ever be surprised. Nobody has ever shown them. Well, very quickly, I mentioned mm -hmm. this to a newspaper man in, in one of our clients in Davenport, Iowa. And he said, yeah, he said, come on up and train my people. I said, Dick, what do I do? He wants an hour program. What do I do? He just write an hour program. So I wrote from my heart, you can't see my heart, but I wrote from my heart and I flew up to Davenport Iowa and delivered four programs. The first program was delivered only to managers because mm -hmm. Bob, the general manager of the newspaper said to me, if this program is, is to work, it must start at the top. It must dribble down, it cannot dribble up. And so I spoke mm -hmm. to all the managers of the newspaper in Davenport Iowa, the Quad City Times. And when it was done, the editor of the Quad City Times walked out to me and he stuck his finger in my nose, my face. He said, you know, you're very good. You sure have all the cures. He snapped his fingers. He said, I'm going to call you the doctor. I'm going to call you the telephone doctor. And I came running back to St. Louis. I said, Dick, some guy called me the telephone doctor. What will I do? He said, let's go get it registered. We're going to have some fun. There you go. Fun we've been having for over 35 years, just helping companies yeah. communicate better with their customers and coworkers. And that normally takes me 45 minutes to tell. I'm exhausted. <laughs> you know, it, it, and of course, I'm an old radio jock and I, you and I have, have talked this. And these are things. My mom was a school teacher, English teacher. And so I was brought up with speaking and writing and understanding how to use my voice maybe more effectively than, than other people. And I was blessed to have a decent voice to begin with. You have what we uh, say in the radio business. A good set of pipes. A good set of pipes. Hang yeah. on. Let me talk like, you know, talk like that. Would that even be better? Don't talk like that. Talk like you were talking. Like Lou, Lou Rawls. Is Lou Rawls still alive? <laughs> or Barry White? Are they alive? Teddy's going to, he's our crack researcher. Oh, yeah, he, he's going to do vodka. I'm just going to have some... a little vodka. <laughs> hey, is that legal? Can we, can we drink on air? Is this, this is, this is not broadcast. We, we, I guess we can. We can do that. You know, our, except our except I'd get fired. I'd probably get fired for that. But yeah. I want to ask our sponsors, Randy. I would wager. I would wager that they uh, would allow for it. And Todd says Barry uh, is no longer <laughs> alive. And I know for a fact that Lou Rawls died January sixth of two thousand and six. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, I go back to this whole thing about grammar and and speech. In fact, uh, within goodwill, that's something that uh, you know we're always looking at how do we train our folks to do better 
um, on the job. And, and it's usually focused on, okay, how can we help build a better resume? How can we coach job hunters? But yet if we as service providers don't speak in a professional way, that detracts, or I think it takes away from our credibility. I think it does. I think people observe and they, they listen. And when they hear or they see written words that are not what they're supposed to be, or they're misspelled, inappropriate yeah. words and all those kind of things. I think sometimes we, we look at that and we judge people rightly or wrongly based on the words that they use and how they use them. How do you feel about that? Well, it, it's incredibly yeah. true. Uh, I've lost business because my web page had several mistakes on it that nobody caught. And the woman said, mm-hmm. I need to tell you, Nancy, I know you're a great speaker, but your website is confusing. There's a lot of gram- yeah. grammatical errors. And she said, I just don't feel comfortable. Well, you mm-hmm. bet I fixed everything. They're all fixed. But, you know, proofing is, is not, and I, Valerie, if you're listening, I apologize. I'm not a good proofer, all right? And I should be a better proofer. But all it takes is maybe 5, 10, 15 seconds to read over something the, the problem is, and I, I'm a little bit scattered here, is that there are some people who don't know the difference between your and your, there and there, see and see, here and here. It's, I see things on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. Randy, that executive, top level executives yeah. are using the wrong your. Now, I know they're busy. I know they're using the Siri. You can't trust Siri. She hates me. So you don't <laughs> want to trust her. She's good for certain things, but for proofing and I'm, this yeah. is my New Year's resolution or pre-New Year's resolution. I, I'm really going to practice more uh, proofing. I got you. Hey, we're going to dive into some talking points here. Nancy, you provided us with a few. And certainly that first one was to figure out, okay, where'd this term telephone doctor come from? So we understand the why behind what you do. And this was something that you necessarily didn't come out of school saying, hey, I want to be a telephone doctor, but your natural talents and there, uh, and also identifying a need, it was a nice marriage. And so you have, yeah, yeah you've got yeah. those. All right, so let's dive into this one. And, and I use a different term. So I'll use your term and mine together. You say, you have a saying, sometimes we hire people because they are breathing. Mm. Why is that? And I so use the term fogging a mirror, but it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So you know, my what mother- do you mean? My mother had a wonderful saying, and I yeah. quote her more times than probably people like to hear. And mm-hmm. she used to say, Nancy, there's very little new. There's just new people doing it. And, you know, these new kids come along and they think they invented something that you and I have been doing since we're three years old. And your parents said the same thing. So um, I'm just frosting on the cake. But what was your question? <laughs> Sometimes we hire people because they are breathing. They are breathing. We get desperate. We get desperate. Uh, I've been there. I've been there. You get desperate. And I don't even want to, I, we need to talk about COVID, et cetera, but I don't want that to be a reason we hire somebody too quickly. I've got a job tip that I don't understand why more people don't do it. And if, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But the first best job tip for, for when you're hiring somebody, whether you're in a hurry or not, take them to lunch, take them to breakfast. That's a whole nother persona that they will, ex- they will exam- exam- example, make an example of uh, how they treat the waiter, the waitress, how they eat. I mean, I don't know, I don't, yeah, I don't know, they chew with their mouth open. Certain things are done at a meal that aren't done in a resume or yeah. an interview. Uh, and so we hire people so quickly because we're all look pretty. We're all dressed nice, you know, perfect on the interview. Teddy's um, very pretty, don't yeah. you think? The other thing, he's very pretty. Yeah, that's another program. Just saying. Yeah, right. Program. So my question to the audience is, and you guys, um, how familiar are you with the DISC profile, the DISC profile? Uh, Hiring somebody without it being part of the DISC profile, and if you're not familiar with it, I'll I'll take the thirty seconds to explain it. But it's please do, please do, yeah, please do. It's a uh, uh, it's a page of questions Mm -hmm. that the interviewer E takes. It's, it's not a personality quiz. It is a work style. Mm-hmm. And I guess for better, I'm going to do this very in, uh, old fashioned like, so bear with me. I think I'm an IS. Well, don't talk yet because I haven't explained it. Oh, I can't see it. D-I-S-C. I think I'm an IS. I'll write down the D-I-S-C. Mm-hmm. The D is, 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 it's just a work style. It's not a personality. It's for, it, D stands for dominant. And the dominant per, work style, they're usually very, they're usually 
high level executives. They're mm -hmm. usually in place of, for lack of a better word, power. Mm -hmm. uh, the D personality, are, they, they, want, they want answers when they ask a question. If you ask, if the D asks you, what time is it? They don't want to know how to build a watch. Just give them the answer. They're very, sometimes brisk. The best part of them is they make good decisions. They're good decision makers. Good. Good. Uh, the I stands for influencer. And that doesn't mean, you know, I'm a LinkedIn influencer. It just means you enjoy people. Those yeah. are the true people people. When an interview says, you know, do you, what's your bad? Well, I'm a people person. Well, that's such well, BS. It's just, don't be a, you know. <laughs> Uh -huh. the, the, I, the I personality, the, the positive is we're we're usually not afraid to stand up and talk and and inter, inter engage. They're your best customer service people by all means because they can talk to most anybody. The negative to a high I is we're a little we can get disorganized. We we go by the seat of our pants so many times because we're good at it and we understand it. The S is for steadiness. Those are people you do want to hire. They are good people. They come in on time. They stay after. They they you know they do like their lunch hour, but they're very good long term employees. Mm -hmm. The negative to an S, uh, they don't enjoy change. They don't do well with change. They do it eventually, but you got to be explained and you got to understand it, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the uh, C personality stands for conscientiousness. So Valerie, if you're listening, I'm going to make some fun of you now. The C personality dots every I, crosses every T. And uh, they they are if if I get a, a seven page letter single spaced, I don't read it. I don't read it. I hand it to Valerie, who is a high C, so she's reading. She reads every line. She underlines. She highlights. And that's what a high I need. You need a C backup. And it, it's not that you work well together. That's not the point. Her work style is proofing my stuff, and she's very good at it. But, you know, like in Missouri, we have a stop sign and we roll through it here in Missouri. All right. Very few people make a hard stop. Valerie, the high C, she sees a stop sign. She gets out of the car. She looks both ways, comes back, and then she goes. I mean, they really, you know, when I see a no parking, uh, it doesn't say today. You know, it just doesn't. <laughs> you mean me? Who you, you're talking to me over here? Yeah, All yeah, right. So knowing, knowing yourself and understanding the different personality uh, types, if you will. And, and I think that can certainly be of help. So um, let's, let's hit on, let's hit on, uh, you've got some of these out of the box tips that yeah. you'd yeah. like yeah. to I share. Sure and you could that. probably talk for hours about that. So let's, let's knock a few of these out. We'll, we'll uh, let's take them in any order you want to. You're, you're the guest. So uh, fire away. What, what is an out of the box tip you'd like to share with us today? Well, the first one, the first yeah. one Andy, is certainly you can interview in the office, mm -hmm. but take them to a meal, take them to lunch, set a right. date. Are they on time? If you, if you set it for tomorrow, the following day, are they on time? Did, you know, did they offer to pay? You know, I, they probably don't expect to, but the offer to pay, may I, it may seem like a bribe. I understand that, but the offer sometimes is good. Can I at least leave the tip? Uh, mm -hmm. Shows an, uh, something. So taking them out to lunch, and I will tell this story because this is critically important. That's how we hired Valerie, who's now with me almost 20 years. I had five ladies with me, and Valerie was being interviewed at lunch. And we had a secret code. Ready? I told my five coworkers, if we like her, order dessert. If you don't, say no thank you. I don't care for dessert. So we finished lunch, ordered dessert. I said, yeah, I'll have, I'll have lunch. I'll have the chocolate cake. And everybody went, had lunch, had lunch, had, had breakfast, had, excuse me, had dessert, dessert, dessert. Mm -hmm. And Valerie, would you like dessert? No, thank you. I don't like desserts. So I'm thinking, is she turning us down? Well, she didn't know the <laughs> she didn't know the code, thank God. <laughs> but that's how you know. That's another way to do something to enter, entertain somebody and have a little code. Yeah, uh, taking to lunch is, is awesome. So, um, so as a as a job seeker, if I'm looking for a job and the recruiter or the hiring manager or the business owner says, "Let's go to lunch," I should remember that even at the table with fork in hand, I'm being interviewed. Absolutely, which is why we say, to, I don't, when I talk to groups, very few people say, oh, I, I take people to lunch all the time. They don't do it. It's a missing link yeah. in hiring. Yeah. The other thing is ask simple out of the box questions. I mean, everybody says, so where do you want to be in five years? And you know, yeah. what's your favorite thing? So my questions were, who was last well, I used to say, who's the vice president of the United States? I was appalled at the it's number Randy. of people. I was up the cute. I was appalled <laughs> at the number of people who could not name 
the vice president of the United States. I don't ask for cabinet members. I asked simple, I asked, you know, what countries border the United States? I had like 10 questions and, you know, not everybody got that right. I had a simple little math thing, a, one question I had, which, and then my next question was, which, uh, which is right there, there, see, so you, you know, in a sentence and mm -hmm. I gave them a choice. I was amazed. I, what's your favorite book? What's your favorite movie? Those are out of the box questions that aren't on any resume that I've ever seen or any, excuse me, any, any interview questions. And I don't read mm -hmm. that many books. I have only had one interview in my life, one interview in 35 some odd years. And when I worked at WGN television, I was my man, David Taylor was his name, he's long gone, but he interviewed me. And the last question was at WGN television, I interviewed to be the sales secretary, very impressive job. He said, do you want to be on camera? And I said, absolutely not. That's not my, I came here to be a secretary. And he told me later, you got the job out of maybe 15, 20 ladies because you were so honest, Nancy. So honesty is, a, you know, ask something that they've got to be honest about. Mm -hmm. uh, do you like to work late? Oh yeah, I love to work late. That's not an honest question. <laughs> an honest answer. An honest answer. Hey, I remember back in college, we had a, I think it was a geology class. I think it was Dr. Kirkpatrick was our professor. And he said that on every test or quiz until everybody gets it correct in the entire class, I will give you a map of the U.S. with the states outlined and you must fill it in accurately. These are college students. And son of a gun, we got that same stupid map the entire semester. We never got it all right. And so I know I'm with you because I think, especially we get a little nervous. We're in an interview and we prep for all of these things. Uh, tell me about yourself, strengths, weaknesses, where you want to be in five years. And hopefully we've got our act together with, with that. And then th somebody throws the curveball of what's the last book you read? What's your favorite book? Um, what you, what so, genre, even what genre is, yeah, is good. Yeah. Because, I mean, I like crime and mysteries on television. I'm, that's a, that's a no brainer for me. If you ask me, you know, what do you watch? We look for them. By the way, the untold stories on Netflix has been bad. Yeah, Teddy, I see a nice comment in there. Let me let me do the uh, let me do the uh, Don threw out this question to yep. a telephone doctor. It says, okay, I get you know the voice communications, the ability to communicate appropriately and clearly is important, but look what's happening with voice communications. You know, we're moving to text. We're moving moving to uh, Zoom. We're moving to other other ways of communicating beyond just simply voice to voice through this thing. Um, how do you see that impacting people? And, you know, how should people be thinking about that style, those different variations of communications? And I'm hoping I'm asking that in the context that Don asked. Well, Don, thank you for your question. I appreciate that. Uh, let, let's go back to communications and tone of voice. Tone of voice can be is, is also on chat. It's obviously on Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it can be in an email. That's why you never send an email when you're upset and angry. Try not to. And we've all done it and it doesn't end well because it's either a hundred emails or it's an end, end of a relationship. Uh, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. Let me tell you something about voice. And I don't, stop me if this goes way too long. I'll make it, I'm trying to make them short. Uh, it doesn't matter what communication you're using. Tone of voice, the smile, the words we say work. I mean, it doesn't, don't, I, we, I can count you right now, six or seven channels of communication, email, voicemail, snail mail, phone, fax, text. What, what would I mean, leave out? I mean, chat. I mean, you, you can put any, any channel of communication in there and every telephone doctor service skills technique will work and help you. So that's an excuse. The Zoom is an excuse. I was chosen uh, years ago to be the head person to go around it was about 10 or 12 cities for the largest, well, it was AT&T that I can say that I guess. And the first one I went to, I said to the call center manager, they wanted me to monitor their calls. And we sat down and we listened to a whole bunch of calls. And I said to the call manager, tell me about your hiring process. She said, well, we give them a keyboard in test and how to be good and we do it uh, spelling and good and we do this and we do that and um and she had eight or ten tests that they give them it was rigorous and i said to her where is the voice test you're in the headlights where yeah. do you hear them talk so that you know that they a are using incorrect english number two do they slur their words 
they weren't doing a voice test. So my tip to the recruiter or to the interviewer, when you've got a good interview there, you're going good, say, I'm gonna step out of the room. Here's my cell phone or ask them to step out. Here's my cell phone. Please give me a call and talk to them on the phone. The other thing that I wanna say, and I, it still said, I, I don't understand it. An interviewer will say, well, tell me about yourself. So watch Mr. Interviewer, Mr. Recruiter. If they say, well, what do you wanna know? There's something wrong there. Tell me about yourself. You should just spat out. I was born in Chicago, Illinois. I had a great upbringing. My family was wonderful. I had one brother. I mean, that should just come out. If you don't know your, your own self, how are you gonna learn about a company? So that's and a great so point, Nancy. Yeah. That, that says to me that in, in business and job seeking, career transition, whatever, there are a lot of questions that if you pause to answer them, you are indicating you are not prepared. And as you said, if I'm not prepared to talk about Teddy, I, mean, I, I say just go on back to bed. Yeah. It, and yet silence, you know, silence, they say is golden. Well, it's not in certain areas. You're right. You're right, Teddy. Mm -hmm. um, I was on a phone call the other day and I asked a simple question. Do you carry LG washers? There was a good seven to 10 seconds before she whispers to somebody else, do we carry LG washers? Yeah. Yes. So um, Mike, our buddy, our buddy Mike just dropped in and said that uh, he had lunch with Ross Perot a while back. And uh, he said Ross's favorite thing was to interview people over meals, preferably breakfast. And I remember that story as well. So uh, mm -hmm. um, hey, uh, back to you, buddy. Got one. Uh, and this deals with a phone. And this is, uh, well, she's since retired, but Ruth uh, had worked with me for, for a number of years with a professional center. And it was something, and Susan also is retired, but it was a, it was a frustrating piece of our job. And that was dealing with our clients, ostensibly professionals now, we're talking professionals, professional center. When we would call their cell phone, we would either get the mailbox is full. The mailbox has not been set up. Or we may get an automated, you've reached 336, or we'll get, hey, yo, it's me. You know what to do. Want to talk about I'm, that? I'm kind of exaggerating a little bit, but the point. No, you're not. No, you're not. We've got, we, those people point, are out there. Point is, what I'm trying to make here is that if I'm an employer and I'm calling to set up an interview, as an example, and I get the automated voice thing, I don't know that I've dialed the correct number. And I'm not sure I want to leave a lot of yes. personal information. Hey, this is to set up an interview. Because what if I've dialed the wrong number? And, and also, then if I get the, hey, it's me, you know what to do, or I get, I've had people say, you know, the vote for so-and-so or here's what I support or, you know, that's not the time and place. And so I'm sure you've got some horror stories, but um, any tips for what to do yeah, or yeah. what to leave on your outgoing greeting on your cell phone? Uh, oh, can I take a picture real quick so I don't forget? Oh, I'll, I'll send you the picture. I think Teddy right. takes one at the outset. So, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, bottom line, I took yeah. your picture anyway. Um, let me go a step back to get to that, what you're asking. Talk about caller ID. There's no, that's why I brought the phone up. I mean, who doesn't have caller ID on their phone? I mean, everybody's got it. Mm -hmm. So, believe it or not, answering the phone with, well, hi, Teddy, or hi, Woody, or something else is it's not only not professional, you could be wrong. Horror story quickly told. We had caller ID a telephone doctor and everybody loved it. One day my secretary, not Valerie, then answered the phone. She saw the call come in from her fiance and her fiance's phone number. So she picked it up with something very inappropriate and very personal. Yeah, you're right. It wasn't her fiance. It was her fiance's boss. She came into my office crying elephant tears. And I said, Jeannie, what is the mantra here at Telephone Doctor? Answer professionally every time. Then why would why would you let your guard down? Well, I thought it was Joe. Well, you thought wrong, didn't you? <laughs> I, my husband calls me on my cell phone and it says Dick calling. I don't pick it up with, you know, what are you wearing? I pick <laughs> every call I pick up is, hi, it's Nancy, every <laughs> single call. So you're saying when your husband calls, you go, hi, is this Dick? And then you go, what are you wearing? <laughs> well, 
Hey, hey Teddy, it's half past. I don't want to get into that right now. I'm joking yeah. with you. Give, give me a minute. Give me a minute here because it's, it's the half hour break. Hey, everybody. This is Teddy Burris and Randy Wood, and you're on Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy. And our special guest that we're having fun with today is Nancy Friedman. Nancy's referred to globally as the telephone doctor, and she's bringing great conversations with us today about, you know, out-of-the-box thoughts for job seekers and business professionals who are communicating. So uh, we're grateful to have everybody on here. We're grateful for all of our sponsors to help make this happen. Randy, take the show back, buddy. Absolutely. And if you have a comment or question for Nancy, please put it in the chat box or uh or, or, they can win a book if they if i don't have the answer oh, hey i'm gonna throw a curveball at you because oh, you know I'm, I'm a baseball guy and i i have the the bolt <laughs> bolt autographed the ball so i have the autographed baseball okay. that i that i threw uh it probably has dirt and grass stains on it because <laughs> that was so wild <clears throat> but here here's a curveball and this is you know i'm, I'm going to throw a phrase at you and I, I, whether you know it by this phrase or, or not but it's a conversational bridge kind of a thing and it's called a uh, a verbal cushion okay i'll write that down a verbal cushion i had a, a sales training years ago uh, and and part of the the training was understanding the product knowledge that kind of thing and the other was how to sell and and one of the one of the things I remember about the how to sell part dealt with the conversation as a sales guy talking to a prospect and they throw a, what's this going to cost me? Or why are you better than your, whatever. And, and so the conversational bridge or the, the cushion is something you would say or do to show respect for the question, allow people to drop their defenses and give you time to think about what you're going to say. And I found that I had used that unknowingly. I just did it. Right, right. But when I became aware of it and the power it has to diffuse a situation, to put people at ease. So, for example, what's this going to cost me? Well, Nancy, for you, I'll keep it under $5 million. How does that sound? And, and you laugh a little. And I say, but no, seriously, we, what we do is sit down and, and talk individually with our potential customers to understand their specific needs. And then we customize a solution based on what you've said. And I think you can carry that into an interview and also into everyday life to help diffuse, especially customer service people. How come my bill's so high? What are you going to do about it? I mean, if you fight back and go, well, you're dope, you can't read your bill. That's probably not going to win a customer. Even, even I under. Though. Even though I may be a dope and I can't read my bill, but that's beside the point. It's speaking my language because, you know, when I yeah. do monitor calls and, mm -hmm. and I I can fall off the chair sometimes at what yeah. men and women, managers and staff, owners. And it just it's just simple little words that can be rephrased. Example, telephone doctor, we do not use the word, I got some bad news for you. Nobody has ever called a company and said, uh, can you get my name's Nancy? Can you give me some bad news, please? I really want some bad news. So we have removed that. And I'll give you the tip now. All right. All right. So, Randy, I've got some good news and I've got some not so good news. Which would you like to hear first? <laughs> I want to hear yeah. good news. Now. We have removed yeah. the word bad news from our delivery yeah. service. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes no negative. I guess the telephone doctor explained me put is it's positive statements at the top of the conversation. We got a class act video called Five Forbidden Phrases, Condition of Employment, Grounds for Termination at, at our office. So it's training from the start, but going back to the interviewing, you know, be careful that you're not answering negatively. Um, you said verbal cushion. Uh, we call them buffers. So sure. they're just there are things that you can depend on and time to think. That's exactly what they are. Mm -hmm. My favorite buffer when somebody asks me something and I don't have immediate information is, that's a very good question. When did you need that information? Mm -hmm. We have found that most people don't need information as we speak. And if they do, we usually can get it. But that's a real good question. Let me check and find out. By the way, when did you need that information? That, that's a good response in that case. Now, in an interview, that I would not go that direction. No, 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 if no, right, right. I'm sorry, right. we're talking sales things, but, but for it sure, it is a sales yep. situation. Yep. So, if somebody asks a question that you that the interviewee is not able to answer, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of silence with that's a very good question. I, I need I need to ponder a bit on that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt, in my opinion. 
mm-hmm. uh, as long as you don't put it off and just say, hmm, I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> None of your business. Yeah, now, right. I, where I'm going with that was, Nancy, where I'm going with that is that they say, hey, listen, I see you don't have a master's degree. Or you know what? I see you have had multiple jobs in the last two years. Or I see you haven't worked in nine months. Uh, you know the answer. I mean, and then it's, it, it's ultimately it's how good is your excuse or, you know, why it why is that? And so to acknowledge that, you might even say things along the lines of if I were in your shoes, I'd probably wonder the same thing. Perfect, let me perfect. let me let me address that. Right. Uh, yeah, or I've you, been you, asked that before. Let me address that. That kind of a thing to show, hey, I, you didn't coming up and up and up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. You didn't throw me off. But but whether it's called a bridge or a cushion, putting that little buffer in there to your word is it is a great way to buy yourself a little bit of time to diffuse the situation. Yeah. You let yourself think. And it's, you know, another thing too, is it shows because some interviewers are jerks and, or, well, let's, let's, let's sweeten that a little bit, Teddy. Uh, They're not jerks. They, they are intentionally trying to rattle you a little bit. Trap you, trap you. Yeah. Yeah. They're trying to rattle you, especially if it's a customer service position, because you're going to get irate phone callers. So they're trying to see how are you going to perform under pressure? And so they may try to rattle you a little bit and they're looking for everything from body language to tone of voice and so forth. So, so, we, so we, yeah. have some, you... we have some interviewers in the audience, Randy. We do. We do. I'd love to hear from them. I may have questions. So good to hear. <laughs> Randy, Randy bluntly and maybe a little satirical. All right, you jerk, yeah. Use the jerk term. What term <laughs> would you guys use when you're really trying to rattle somebody uh, during an interview to get them to really open up? So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that. And I've been. I say I've, I've only had yeah. one interview in my life, but I've interviewed hundreds, hundreds of, of mm-hmm. looking for customer service job, looking for a sales job. I like to ask them off the off the, out of the box questions. I don't know that I want to rattle them um, to the point of of frustration. Yeah. But I, yeah. uh, I do throw out of the box questions at them. And I, the, the test that we used to have was a written test where they go in the conference room, they fill it out, and then I come back and rate it for you. Mm-hmm. That, that rat testing quote, you know, rattles anybody. Uh, everybody <laughs> thinks they're good at customer service. Everybody yeah. thinks they're good at customer service. And not everybody is. So how do you find out? And we're off the topic of, of yeah. I think we're on, but you brought it up, so I'll answer it. Um, example, I had a lady come in for sales position and she said, oh, I'm so good. What is that? How do we answer to like interviewing? Oh, that's a good question from MD Brock. That would be Mike. His name is Mike. He's a, he's our stalker. This guy's been stalking Randy and I for 15 years. So if you want to take that question from Mike, go with it. How would you deflect or an, an inappropriate question? Would what you, would be, I need to know what, what you know, inappropriate I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you everybody. one, Nancy. I'll give, you an inappropriate, you I'll give you an inappropriate question, okay? okay. So, and, and, and um, I'm going to ask Randy, so I'll get myself in trouble. So Randy, exactly why are you bald? Now, Nancy, how should Randy answer that? Oh, I didn't know I was. Thank you for mentioning it. I mean, Randy and I have a similar handle the situation with humor. Yeah. yeah. And so my answer to him is, oh, I, oh, I forgot my toupee. Oh my God, I didn't know I was. Yeah. Uh, and if that doesn't alleviate a little humor or a smile mm-hmm. from the interviewer, I you know that I I don't know that I want to work with. You know, the most important trait is a sense of humor. And so many interviews keep it too serious. So if in Mike's question, if someone asks a, a, a legally inappropriate question, like, you know, are you pregnant or how old are you or whatever, you know, what's your religion or political background, an inappropriate question in many cases are illegal, then you're, is, is the suggestion apply? Use humor well, you're, to reflect it? You're talking to somebody who has a passion to turn situations into a positive with humor. So. Got it. It doesn't matter what question I'm asked. I've al- I always say there's always humor in it. Now, should he put humor in the interview? If it's an inappropriate one, I sure would. Uh, what is your age? God knows. That's the only person that knows. What is your age? Is on usually on the re- re- the thing anyway. I, why yeah. would anybody ask what your age was? But that's just you threw that out. I didn't mean to put that on you. Uh, there, not everybody is as quick thinker as Randy and Teddy and Nancy. There are some people who just don't think quick. So they need to master 
one line when their inappropriate question is asked. And that could be, that is a very good question. Let me check and find out. I mean, that answers pretty much everything. And to somebody, I'm, I'm trying to think of an inappropriate question. Well, um, Mike threw out, how old are you, Nancy? Well, that, you know? that is- And you told, me, you told me there was a question I couldn't ask you. So imagine if I asked you that question. So you're going to ask me how old I am. Yeah. Everybody wants to know. That's just something that, you know, I had an aunt who lived to be 101 years old, and she always lied about her age. And I finally, at her 100th birthday, I said, Julia, you're 100 years old today, and you've been lying about your age forever. Why did you do it? And she said, with a big smile on her face, and I'll make, I'll keep it clean, because it's nobody's GD business. That's what she said <laughs> to our entire family. Yeah. You can't say that to a the interviewer maybe not maybe i not. would yeah. i would prefer to keep it real and ask you know questions that a, an interviewer would really ask yeah. and get us out of that yeah. one i don't think uh it's, it's the reason i don't uh, it's the reason i don't enjoy or approve of role playing and reading scripts yeah. because the script that we're reading is not the script that the other person has so it it fails a hundred maybe 90 percent of the time when people say we do you know we have scripts and I, let me see the script I'd rather have bullet points, yeah. but we're off topic. Hey, I've got a, yeah, I've got a few more talking points. We want to hit as many as we can. We may have to do a speed round here. I don't know if, if that's, is that legal, Teddy? Can we do I a speed, speed round? round? Speed round. Speed anyway, you, on that. you had several tips you wanted to share. So we did tackle a couple, three of them. You have a couple more you'd like to throw out there. Some of these out of the box tips. Out of the box tips. I'm going to yeah. go for my, uh, my list, which avoid nervous habits. I mean, everybody has one. It could be, you know, knuckle cracking. It could be biting your nails. When you go into an interview, think before you speak, number one. Keep a smile on your face. Active listening. Here's a great tip. So many people agree with everything that the interviewer says. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Stop for a moment. If you don't understand it, the honesty will come through. Excuse me. I hate to interrupt, but I, I'm not quite understanding that particular yep. phase of the job. Can you elaborate a little bit? The more interested you are, without sounding dumb, um, the ability to learn, humility. You know, uh, you know. I have, I've had made a few mistakes at, at other places. If you like to hear of them, I can tell you. They probably won't be horror stories, but the honesty and the humility and the no, no wimpy words. You know what weak wimpy words are? They're just words that don't do anything. Uh, yep. I'm yep. a people person. Yeah. Is that, one, is that one of them? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. No, what? I don't like people. I just, I'm not just, oh, is this customer service? You know, I don't enjoy people at all. I don't like talking to them. So <laughs> everybody's a people person. All right. <laughs> Everybody. Now, some enjoy it more than others. Uh, obviously, I mean, that's why, and I don't mean this badly, but there yeah. are people who have their own private of bookkeepers, you know, people that have to deal, the, the C personalities are not 100% as effective in a customer service situation as an I personality. Yeah, I'll tell you a true story, and I, I won't mention company or name of the person. Yeah, we've, uh, to been taught, we've been told about that, Randy. Protect the innocent. Uh, but this guy was in, he was a trainer, corporate trainer. And he told us, he's uh, off to the side. He says, you know, I really don't like people. Well. <laughs> Always remember that. All right. So we. It shows. Usually it shows. We, uh, by the way, that was me. I mean, you talked about nervous yeah, yeah. things. I was. Do, that was the sound effect in the below the screen. But I was doing this. So, okay. yeah, people that do that or they uh, they touch you know, they, oh, the hair they touch. Well, no, oh my touch. God, the hair touching drives me crazy with the long hair. Kind of like that. And, hair, yeah. yeah, I sat in a meeting with a guy doing this one time. Oh, terrific! terrific. All right, nice. so it would I guess uh, a mirror would help, and yeah. to have a friend look at you and and observe body language and eye contact would that help you as far it, as the communication? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Interrupt. Oh, please. I interject. I don't interrupt. You know, doing a a. a a Zoom practice with your with a, with somebody that you respect, not a friend. It's not that you don't respect your friends, but you need somebody to say, "You got a nervous habit. You keep putting you you know you're not smiling when you're answering these questions." 
I cannot tell you how the tone of face on an interview makes it. It just makes it. The other thing that's a good tip for interviewers, and I meant to mention this, we at Telephone Doctor, we had group interviews. We would put six to 10 people in our conference room okay. and ask, ask a question to everybody. Okay, Paula, what do you want? Rhonda, okay, say. And we would hear them back and forth. And what I was looking for were the, I can't, I don't have the word for it. The person said, oh, I was just gonna say what she said. I mean, there's no ingenuity there. If I've taken your, if I've taken your words, think of something else. So in our particular company, we need quick thinkers on your feet. And that was one way to find out. Uh, and the ones that said, oh, I'm a people person. I also said, what, what do you mean by that? I love people. Well, who doesn't? I mean, you know. Yeah. I, useless yeah. phrases. Those oh were things God. you wanted to cover. You I have do, some useless phrases. And the first one is the simple thing that everybody says about 10 times a day. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. How are you? Nothing has happened. Absolutely nothing. Good to hear your voice. Glad to see you. I'm glad you called. Nice talking with you. Hi, how are you? Is social noise. It's not bad. You'll still go to mm -hmm. heaven, but it's useless. I mean, you walk in the mall. Remember, you used to walk through the mall. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? They're gone. Nobody did it. Never, nothing happened. And but I, wait, but what? wait. Then you get the guy who stops you and tells the life story. And now you're looking and your feet are moving. Yeah. How do I get the heck out of here? And I start going like that. Next thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you later. So there's a happy medium in there. Do you have any tips for understanding maybe in reading others body language to see if you might be talking too long or being, be, being um, uninteresting? I don't have that many tips for that. I want to finish the, if you don't mind, the oh, please. Okay. useless phrases. Uh, the hi, how are you story, though, that's great. And I'll make this one quick. Uh, my mother answered the phone for me one time at the house. And she said, hi, Friedman residence. This is Esther. And I said, hi, Mrs. Residence. How are you today? She said, oh, I'm so glad you called. She said, I have diarrhea. I can't, my pacemaker's running a little slow. I have a migraine. The corner of my foot is killing me. How are you? And the guy says, word verbatim compared to you a hell of a lot better. So you, know, <laughs> you can give them those kind of things. Um, here's a useless phrase. Okay, Randy, if I don't see you uh, before Labor Day, have a- Have, have a great a day. day. Yeah, but what if I do see you before Labor Day? Mm -hmm. I mean, if I don't see you before Christmas, have a good day. What if I do see you? I mean, it's just, to have a great day is fine, but I don't think the words, if I don't see you before such and such is necessary. Uh, the other thing is usually in a letter or an email, uh, the, it's usually the last line from a salesperson forbidden at our office. If you have any questions, please let me know. No, I'm stupid. I won't ask any questions. I, the answer should the question, the line should be, trust me to follow up. Thank you. How and about another know? one when people say, I just wanted to. Oh, yeah. that's, that's a. I, I just wanted to ask. A forbidden phrase. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted just to. Just a note to thank you for the interview. What am I, chop liver? <laughs> to remove the word just it is a weak worthy yeah. word you yeah. get this from the telephone doctor um <laughs> I, I, don't like I it. also offer this never put the word just in front of who you are or what you do absolutely I'm, I'm right. just an interviewer no i'm a world-renowned interviewer Eddie, unless you have an accent just do it or else no, you'll good. die um, the pestilence another... across the land so it... <laughs> I, I get We're having too much fun here today. Too much, Nancy. Thanks for coming in. By the way, time has come so quickly. You guys are great. Hey, um, I got another one here for you. Uh, what was it? Was the the most forgotten interview tip? Ah, oh, most forgotten was the meal. Oh, okay. Well, that that, that, that was the the meal. Uh, I thought it was wear pants, but I'm I'm good with the meal too. I'm, I'm good with or without. Who uh, uh, who should start the interview? That That's was a, one on here. Yeah, that was a great question. And, and it, it, the work style usually helps because if you're going to interview me, I would say, you know, I'm very happy to be here. Throw me a question. So I've really taken the initiative and the control. I, I guess each work style is different and each person that comes in is going to need to feel comfortable with it. But you should have, if somebody says, go on, tell me about yourself, please. Well, I would, you know, start out with where you were born and you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, tell, tell me your blood type, 
But bottom line, mm-hmm. if you can't talk about yourself, uh, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah. Any other tips? Uh, we've got about 10 minutes left, and I want to make sure we give you a few minutes to summarize. Uh, and then Teddy and I will make some up some random story. Teddy, I have no idea what I'm going to say, but that never stopped me before. Nancy, you have anything else any on the tip sheet yeah, that I you'd wanna, like to throw out there? Thank you. I want to talk yeah. about the LinkedIn page. Um, and this is sure. very near and dear to your heart, I know. But some people still have their bar mitzvah picture up. So if you're over 21 and going for a job, get a good picture of yourself. Spend the money, get a professional photographer. And for gosh sakes, when you take the picture, have a smile. Go look at the LinkedIn pictures. I don't care, random anywhere. And and sadly, there are more people in the presidential, I'm not smiling, than just a fun picture. And that's where their interviews are going now. They're going for your LinkedIn file, and it's got to be updated. It should be updated uh, with as much proactivity as you can have, something that's a little special about you, whether you're a magician or a dancer or an actress or whatever. Mm-hmm. I have trouble with the word I on an interview letter. I this, I that, I this, I that. And I've been told I'm wrong. I just, I, so that's up for the grabs, whether that's right or wrong. I just. Mm-hmm. But Todd, yep. Todd offered that if we're going to use a, for our LinkedIn profile picture, uh, he the said, he, shots. Yeah. he said he would never use his glamour shot ever again. <sighs> there goes that idea. That's what I heard. Glamour Todd shot. Say. Those are, those are a little too much, but looking nice, you know, having hair and makeup, yeah, not, you know, to the nth degree uh, for a woman is more effective. I mean, it's not that you won't hire an unattractive woman because that's obviously that, that's bias as well. Yeah. Hey, we're going to wrap this up sort of kind of sort of right now, Nancy, if you would, Nancy Friedman has been joining us, uh, the telephone doctor by way of St. Louis, Missouri, and lots of tips on how to communicate better, how to interview better, how to deal with your coworkers and such. So we always, about this time, we always ask, hey, what are some takeaways you'd like folks to have? Takeaways? Yeah. I don't lose your sense of humor no matter what. You know, people talk about culture today, culture. And somebody asked me in an interview, what's your culture at Telephone Doctor? Well, it was created from my dinner table when I was four or five years old. My family always had laughter at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. So when I got into high school and college, I had great roommates. And then when I started working, I had a culture of laugh and smile and be happy. Pollyanna maybe, but it works. So laughter and humor honesty if you don't do something well if i were interview somebody i said i would tell them do not use me for numbers i'm not good with numbers that's an yeah. honest fact and somebody needs to know that even though it's customer service maybe you need to make a quote well i'm not good at that i would need help on that and then honesty etc um, honesty smile humor be nice. Mm-hmm. Don't be too busy to be nice. Don't be too busy to be nice. Everybody's okay. busy. It is a busy time. When companies tell me we're so busy, I'm short staff. Everybody's short staff. Everybody's busy. Be nice. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, go ahead. You get any more that things you like? You've had a ton of good information here today. I've been taking notes, Teddy. I actually was trying to write stuff down today. So. What I want to know is somebody yeah. said I wouldn't take that list and I don't understand what he meant. Thank uh, you. Well, somebody asked the question, is there is it legal and or where would you share in a job process mm-hmm. a list of your political contributions? And my response is never, no. Yeah, right. Right. That was real quick and easy, wasn't it? Yeah, but, uh, but that guy, if you want to contribute money, please contribute to Teddy Burris. You know, it's really easy to get to me. So. Teddy Burris Retirement Fund right over there. It's a right. GoFundMe yeah. project. So Thank it's- you gentlemen, our great interviews. Thank you. Thank Nancy, you very much. Thank you very much for coming on with today. This was an absolute, I don't use this word often, hoot, and we really enjoyed it. Lots of good yeah. stuff and ideas. I'll Thanks. share with everybody how they can find you, your website, uh, where they can follow you on LinkedIn, follow your YouTube channel, and follow you all around uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So thank you very much. Our yes. pleasure, and thank you. And yeah. your hair looks very good, Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Stick around for a few minutes in case you okay. have some barb you want to throw at Teddy here. Uh, <laughs> Teddy, should I, I? I don't really have a story, but I kind of do have a couple of things. One is, <clears throat> and, and this, I, I don't know when I started thinking I was some random jokester and punster. I think the advent of Facebook helped with that. I, I don't know. But uh, for many years, I used to work out a lot, uh, and I don't do it as much as I used to, but I looked like 
a cop or I look like a military guy. And between that, my appearance, the shaved head, the physique, and my voice, I found that I had people offer for the feedback that you sound kind of like a hard ass, a, a little intimidating. And, and, and for people who know me, it's not really me, but I gave that outward appearance. And so at some point years ago, I began to be more aware of talking with open hands, of, of smiling, of some self-deprecating humor. And I've got an ego as big as the next guy, right? And I don't need, you know, so it's not as though I, I'm like, oh no, I don't have any confidence. Far from it. I've got enough for two people. But the, the point being that I didn't want to smother people. I want people to feel relaxed. And I've found that humor is a great way to break the ice. And so you're speaking my language on that, Nancy. The humor part is huge. And if you ever saw me on Facebook, Every day, a couple times a day, it's some random, Teddy's shaking his head. It's usually some random <laughs> pun or some kind of sophomoric humor. It's not evil. It's not biting. It's not, you know, political or anything that's going to get people, uh, you know, they're hurt up. Well, mm. I have to, but I love life's too short. Just have some fun, I yeah. guess. The point. I yeah. With yeah. a couple, couple things. One good yeah. tip that I did forget. People have a terrible habit of going, um, ah, uh, and starting yes. every sentence with, <clears throat> excuse me, well, or so. Watch watch Fox News, watch all your TV shows. The, the unexperienced guest sure. always starts with either um, well, or so. Of, and I just forgot. The oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having so much fun. And you're right. That, you know, there's 45 hours of information in here. And you guys... Like We're brain. gonna have you back on again, Nancy, and you can God do bless. another brain dump here because I have a feeling you've got ample, ample things to share. It's been a really great time. Went flew by. I know Teddy, you've got a story to tell I'll real quick, and then we've got a guest to talk yeah, about for next week. About our, we're talking about our guests coming up yeah. next week, which would be uh, September eighth. So here's my story. I've yeah. never been interviewed before in my life either. Interesting. Um, for the most part, I've never been interviewed for a job. But I've had the pleasure of working with a guy who ran a hundred million dollar Olsten staffing division. And so I learned about people and engaging with people and understanding people and figuring people out through the interview process. And what I discovered is this, that you truly have to be willing to have a conversation on the other side of the table, regardless of who that person is, how well versed they are at interviewing or how pathetic they are at interviewing or how much of a jerk they are as, a, as an interview. Most interviewers <laughs> are really good people and they're truly trying to figure out who you are as a human being. So be willing to share and engage and ask questions and answer their questions and then ask more questions. And be willing to slow down, Teddy, when you're using your words so your mind can guide your mouth on the right words to use. There's no race in an interview. The, the goal is to communicate in a meaningful and relevant way so that you're perceived as a viable candidate. Did I say that yep. right, Nancy? That's great. You, that yep. was beautiful. And I leave you with the thought of the day. Every day above ground is a great day. Absolutely. Yeah. I got a buddy of mine whose yeah. license plate says that with the initials. So, hey, everybody, one minute to go. Our special guest for next week. Let me get over here in front of me. So I'm not looking at so I'm looking at you when I'm talking. Our special guest next week is Vashali Shaw. Vashali is out of our hometown for Randy and I outside of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. She owns a business called Copper Seed. The conversation is going to be uh, preparing to exit the world of work. It's another one of these conversations that Randy and I talked about and thought, you know what, this would be really relevant to our audience because a lot of us are, you know, maybe we're trying to move into that career, that next career, but there's a lot of us who are on the front side of that conversation, the front side of those mm -hmm. discussions about where do I go when I'm done working for demand or done doing a job. So yep. the Shally Shaw will be on here next week. Nancy, again, thank you very thank much you. for joining thank us. Thank you. Be Randy, safe. It was a pleasure hanging out with you on Wednesday again. I'll see you another day, buddy. All right. You guys have a great week. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.